We're in Sapporo, site of the 1968 Winter Olympics. But that is all history. Tonight, the UWFI is in town for another top-class bill of Bushido. Top of the bill is the UWFI number one, Gary Albright, taking on Bad News Allen of the USA. There's a tag contest, Yamazaki in silver, taking on Takada and Fleming. Kiyoshi Tamura takes on Ray Lloyd, again from the USA. Another tag contest, Nakano of Burton against Miyato and Kakihara. But first up tonight, we start with a real grudge match as Kanehara takes on Takayama yet again. Yoshihiro Takayama is the tallest man in the UWFI, six foot five. He looks a bit thin, but he's a solid 240 pounds. Hiromito Kanehara, last year's UWFI junior champion, a champion wrestler as a schoolboy. He's tipped to go all the way to the top. Here we are again for the third time, Kanehara versus Takayama in a 15 minute time limit bout. Kanehara in the yellow trunks, Takayama in the black trunks. Ooh, tries to <laughs> kick him in the head, but... Stop, stop, stop. Wada deciding that acrobatics on the wings is not what it's about, the crowd seems to like it. Interesting to see whether Takayama's managed to coordinate those long limbs. Ooh. Nice exchange of kicks, but I think Kanehara's coming out on top on most of those exchanges. As you can see, Kanehara's realized that if he can keep moving... Ooh! Takayama's got a pretty interesting right, right strike when he wants to. If he could combine that with a few techniques. If he would stop telegraphing a lot of his punches, then a lot more would get in. Tall man's curse when he's a fighter. Ooh, bad low kick. He has to block those. That, that one he blocked, but... <laughs> As I've said, when that right hand decides to find its target. It's almost like radar. Punch to the midsection. Knee by Kanehara. Kanehara has the all-round advantage, whether they're standing up or on the ground, but for the time being, I think he's safer on the ground. Individual bouts. Both fighters starting with 15 points. Fighter finishing with zero. Being declared the loser. Here we go, Takayama losing the first point. As he said, he hasn't got to worry about where the ropes are. He can just outstretch his arm and he'll reach it, whether he's in the center or the side. He's trying to go for the Achilles tendon hold, but his leg is not in the right position. <laughs> now he found the leverage on that one, but he wasn't locking the leg on the bottom enough, and that allowed Kanehara to be able to roll to the ropes. 14 points each. Ooh, Kanehara oh. went for a spinning back kick, but you notice Takayama threw a low kick at the same time, and that prevented him from it. Well, you mentioned um, telegraph. That was a telegram. I mean, he, he told him from the other side of the ring he was going to do that. <laughs> oh, yet again, Takayama, whenever in trouble, just outstretches those long limbs and finds the ropes. But the last time he found himself doing that too many times, and he ran out of points. Yes, that's true. Even though points weren't a determining factor, he only had a few points left in the match. Sleeper hold by Kanehara, once again too close to the ropes. Shoot sign from referee Wada there. Takiyama <laughs> holding his throat, grunting and groaning. Look at this. Trying to break the hold and then deciding, no, no, let me find the ropes. <laughs> You notice he's trying to kick Kanehara to the body when he's on the ground, but it's not having effect. He can't, he can't seem to put the, his weight behind those kicks. No, as, I've, as I said earlier, 
He's going to have to put a hell of a lot of training on his own individual technique as well as training with his partners. Because you say, can a and himself do train together? But he needs to coordinate those limbs. And as you say, when he doesn't telegraph, he could be quite effective. The trouble is he can't pull his punches back too far when he's trying to throw them. That's what's telegraphing him, and he's taking many wide swings. So we could have Takiyama the ropes as a nickname if we're not careful here. The ankle. But the last match, as I remember, Kanehara, he finished with 15 points. He didn't even lose a single point. In this, he's lost a single point. He's down to 14. So Takiyama's improved slightly. <laughs> By one rope escape. <laughs> Uh oh. Beautiful, beautiful belly to back German suplex by Takayama. This big man's full of surprises. And he's squeezed up his face on the rest of his crowd. Kanehara wasn't expecting that. I don't think anybody was expecting somebody six, six foot, what is he, six foot five to throw somebody over in a bridge suplex like that. Yep. Takayama showing good skill there. And actually having an opportunity himself. Training very well in the UWF IG. Kanehara reciprocates. Now Takiyama takes the count. Seven. And Freewire clearly signaling to the fighter. He decides he's okay to carry on. Takiyama on his knees. Kanehara. Kash. Oh. Oh. He was doing good with his knees, pushing Kanehara in the corner. And I don't think that Kanehara was playing possum or pretending to be hurt to make an opening. He really looked like he had Kanehara in trouble. But Kanehara threw that right kick. Yeah, that there. was the chin. The chin put him square under the chin there. But Kanehara was in trouble. I'm surprised Takayama has really has Kanehara in trouble this time. Yep. But Kanehara has a 10-5 lead. But then again, looking at how many more matches Kanehara's had than Takayama. This is only Takayama's third match. So we're saying a bit of... Um, uh, of weariness on Kanahara's part? Well, Takayama is obviously adapting slowly. But, hates for the ropes. Ten to four. Kanahara leads. But, I think um, Takayama's gonna have to hurry up and dig really deep inside him to try to pull off a victory tonight. He only has four points left. Both tired. Ooh, not bad, but... Spinning back kick, but a little bit flamboyant for this this stage of the fight. You see the person ready to hit the bell at any time as soon as the match is over. He's holding the hammer, just waiting for it. Shoot signed by referee Wada as he gets a knee cross lock on Takayama once again. Now ten to three in Kanahara's favor. And you can hear the referee warning Takayama. You only have three more points, one more knockdown, and you're finished. Oh, a little sloppy now, I think, and this is where injuries can sometimes occur. But the referee, the bell, ringer in the hard shirt, ready to ring that bell. Don't think we'll see. Ooh, don't think we'll see the, the knockout, but maybe a submission here. Bar. Takiyama was banging in frustration now. I don't think it was insufficient. He seems to have motion there. He could boost the rope. The long arms failed him. An appreciative crowd. And another win, Kanahara. On to our first tag contest of the night. Nakano and Burton against Miyato and Kakihara. Tatsuo Nakano, they nickname him Elvis. He's a bit of a slow starter, but when he gets going, his wrestling skills are formidable. And he's building a fine partnership with Tom Burton of Florida. A bit of a wild man, but the two together are tremendous. <laughs> Yuko 
Cambiato, the small man in the big man sport. He makes up with, with all round skill and speed. And his partner is also one of the quickest men in the UWFI, the man with the fast hands, Masahito Akihara. Akira Miyato against Bert and Nakano. Akira Miyato quickly takes him over with a backdrop. Bert looks fired up tonight, doesn't he? Yes, well, I think when Burton and Nakano pair up, it's always an exciting prospect. The crowd's certainly looking forward to this. Well, they make a good tag team. Actually, both of these teams make good tag teams. They've both fought each other, and they have great respect for each other, as well as for their opponents. Kakihara Miyata coming out of the red corner. Burton and Nakano out of the blue corner. Burton looks a little bit bothered by those open hand strikes by Kakihara. <laughs> crowd, crowd doing that, that little exchange there. Well, he actually kind of picked up Burton and kind of dropped him on his head there. Both tag teams starting with 21 points. Burton looked like he had a quarter Nelson. Like a, you can see um, Kakiara's handprint on Burton's back. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Grief. That's a clear mark. Burton in the blue singlet. Kakiara in the black trunks. <laughs> Kakiara shooting for Burton's ankle. Three brought up. And Kakiara takes the first point in this match. Oh. That was a little bit dangerous on Burton's part. Yes, I gotta say, he looks as well as receive. Hope to come on the receiving end of a kick, but Nakano yeah. comes in. I mean, you should never turn your head. Oh, look at this. Nakano took three Ooh. kicks there. Kakiara was very lucky. He almost got nailed in the head with a devastating kick from Nakano. And he just... That kick well, though. Nakano really caught that um, high kick well. He caught him and took him off his feet, put him on the ground, and now he's looking for an opening for a submission. Driving that forearm into Kakiara's um, throat. <laughs> He's, he's going for a double wrist lock right now. Well, the crowd saw something funny, but I don't see anything funny about that hold there. Kakiara making it to the ropes. 20 points each. Miyato takes the ring. See there, look at that arm. Look at the leverage. Yeah, he couldn't quite... If he got his grip together, it might have worked, but... Kakiara was quicker to get to the rope, and now he tags out, and Miyato against Nakano. Both guy, both both fighters setting up each other for the knees. Nakano was telling Miyato to shush then, I'm not sure, but Miyato outside of the ropes. Referee Wada bringing them back into the action. Ooh. Nice heel of the hand strike by Miyato. Nakano not ready to give up as he delivers his own knee and looking for a throw. I think he's going to tag out with his partner right now. That's, beauty, that's the beauty of having a double bout. In a single bout, if you're in trouble, you have to you have to think of how to get a breather, how to get your energy back, how to clear the cobwebs. In a double bout, like a tag team match like this, all you have to do is run away and tag with your partner. That's why one of the strategies turns out to be you find the weak link, and if somebody's hurt, you try to keep them in your own corner. You don't want them. You don't want to be fighting the match in your opponent's corner, in the enemy's corner. Well, I think as Mark Silver demonstrated in the bout we saw him on the earlier programs, he certainly almost took on these two adversaries single-handedly. But the crowd also enjoy a tag team bout because it's got so much excitement. Shoot sign from referee Wada there. Miyato not looking too troubled at this present moment in time. And speaking about double bouts, I'm looking forward to um, a kickboxing double bout that UWFI is going to have soon. The score? 19 to 20. As we see there, Miata making it to the ropes. What do you think about the kickboxing double bout? Well, as I've always said, that should be interesting. I've never actually seen one before. Um, just have to wait and see. What we're seeing at the moment is Tom Burton looking a little bit in trouble. Miata trying to get the upper hand here. 
Borders looks Borders could be interested, but Burton knows his way around now. He's trying to go for a double wrist lock. Burton was kind of stretched his arm out before Miato actually applied the leverage. And he tried to go for a straight arm bar. Referee Wada steps in. And it's actually the clock head scissor hold on Burton's head that made him escape to the ropes and they lose another point. So 19 points each. Kakihara takes on Burton. Kakihara in the black trunks. Now nah, he's in trouble. Out of the ring completely. Falling over video cassettes and everything. The film crew, I think, are in on this now. Referee Wada takes him back in. Let's see what happens. Kakihara is really... He kicked him in the head. Kakihara really knows how to crack the heel of his hand into somebody. Burton seems to be asking. Referee Wada... Pretty confused there, but... Well, he's complaining that his hands were down. So Kakihara was on the this is pretty furious, Palm Strikes, but this is something like a counter. He's really going to kill. But look at the combo, maybe involved in the weaving, good stuff. But Kakara obviously faster with his hands than Nakano. Yeah, but Nakano takes him and dishes out his own, there we see it, look at that. Nice Palm Strike to the jaw. He took all of it, he went there you go. A heel of the hand. 16 points each, Referee Wada gives Kakihara the count. Oh yeah, Nakano's tough. Oh well, spinning crescent kick, playing the tent, and then Nakano applies the uh -oh. pressure. Cross lock. It looked like it, looked like it was almost over for a second there. But Kakihara didn't make it over to the rope, so yeah, he did. Oh, yeah, it, he had the knee cross lock, and his leg made it to the rope right there. And referee Wada breaks them, and Nakano has tagged out with Burton once again. Burton's caught his breath. He's cleared the cobwebs from his head. Yep. And he's back in there with Kakira. Takes him down. That was a nice throw. Nice setup maneuver for a ground submission hold. Two points in it. Burton looking for the cross lock, but Kakira fighting it off. Here it is. Yeah. He takes him over quickly, spins around, and tries to set up the submission hold. Once again, we see Nakano tagging in the ring. Cool, that was a nice low kick. Front kick reply by Nakano. Nice oh, punch oh, to the oh, head. Oh. Nakano didn't bob and weave from that. Nakano setting up a knee. Yeah, Kakihara and very, very sensibly trying to ensure that he didn't receive that knee. And well, he was ready to block that knee, and when he saw the opening, he took it with those open hand blows. And here, Nakano's coming with his own. Uh oh, here it comes. Oh, that was bad, right on the back of the neck. Uh oh, the full Nelson. Uh -oh. oh no, this could be interesting. Points being amassed. Oh, Ricky Wadden takes the cut off to the neutral count. And there, Kakihara is in bad trouble now from the German suplex and the full Nelson suplex. Actually, Miyato and Kakihara's team have lost five points from that. That's right. Look at this. Is, this is the first one. This is the German suplex. 16 points to 9 now in Burton and Nakano's favor. What a turnaround. And Miyato possibly trying to set his own belly to back suplex. Well, the crowd expressing their excitement, wrapped, wrapped back into the silence and concentration of this very technical bout that's acting about this evening. Now the team of Nakano and Burton have a pretty good lead. They dropped another point. See them leading only by 15 points to nine. Heel hold on Miyato. That heel hold has proved to be very effective, worked very effectively for Burton. We've seen um, Tom Burton actually make Gary Albright escape to the ropes with a heel hold from a ground position. Yeah, and I think Miata's gonna follow suit. Yes, he does. Burton tr quickly chases after him, but he was a little bit too slow. Points. Points. Here it comes. The double arm suplex. He set that reverse full Nelson up very quickly and effectively. Oh, look at this though. Miata reversing it with a shoulder lock, but once again, Burton's reversing that, and he's 
trying to apply a chicken wing face lock. He doesn't have the leverage yet. Miyato's right arm is in the correct position yet. Ooh, this looks interesting, though. But you see Burton gives up on that and quickly switches to a sleeper hold. Come on, come on. Points rapidly being lost from either side as for the score there. 15 to 16 in favor of Burton and Nakano. Miyato deciding that the wrestling strategy might need some encouragement with his all-round fighting ability. He attempts to kick and strike Burton's his way. Burton's leaving himself open now, right now. He's got to watch out for Miyato's um, spinning back kick. Oh, end of the head. I don't know what happened there, but he's fast enough to put Burton down. And there's a count. You can hear Nakano saying, come on, come on, come on. There it was. Uh, okay. Right hand strike to Burton's head. Oh, there's some swings going. If one of those connects from either side. Miyato tagged in with Kajaro, which was a pretty good move, but now Kajaro's in trouble. Now kind of with a face lock, switching it into a sleeper hold. He has the body scissors, and they're relatively in the center of the ring. Kind of a powerful, gutsy competitor. But as you see the score now, 12 to 5, Kano and Burton lead. This means Miyata's gonna have to come up with something special. Kakihara, look at this. Some good open air blows. A good knee. Miyata in trouble. Suplex, he didn't exactly drop him on the back of the neck like he was planning to, but nevertheless, he's taking him down to the ground and he's going for a sleeper hold. And they're relatively in the center of the ring. But look, the body scissors he's applied on Miyato. Miyato's actually trying to reverse those body scissors on Nakano by applying an ankle lock. By um, pulling Nakano's ankles with his own feet. But he's lost that hold. And once again, Nakano's trying to look for another opening. As Miyato puts a leg breaker on Nakano. <laughs> well, Nakano just drags. Drags Miyato back in and looks for the side. Of this looks dangerous. Yeah, he has a reverse sleeper hold. <laughs> 12 to 4. Final stages in his tag team bout. Burton and Nakano lead. Burton looks a little tired. Miyato looking for those kicks, but. Burton says, come on, he's getting Burton's there. Off, fired up. Firing up the crowd as well. But there it is. There it is. The answer. Takes a count. Look at that point deficit now. Burton shouldn't be fooling around too much. Out there, he should be getting down to business. High kick to the head, knees. Burton's in trouble. And resilient. Blockhead scissor hold on Burton. Burton's in trouble. Ooh. See how quick that was? Brief. That's all left. He's holding the arm down relatively in the middle of the ring. Applied the hold and pulled up. Good brief. You might come back from that. Blockhead scissor hold by Yuko Miyato. And the winners, Miyato Nahara. Next up, a singles competition, Kiyoshi Tamura against Ray Lloyd of the USA. Ray Lloyd of the USA, 29 years old. He's trying to make a name for himself in Japan, a tough task. It's what he relishes, but this is his debut. Tamura. He started out as a wrestler. He's worked hard on his kicking. This makes him a much more fearsome opponent. As Matthew Saad Mohammed found out, the former world boxing champion was destroyed. And that is why Tamura has a great record. Tamura versus Ray Lloyd. Ray Lloyd opening with a kick. As far as I know, he's an amateur wrestler. And that was a very impressive kick. That was a jumping, spinning kick there. So he's obviously been having some training. 
This, this is gonna be end up to be a pure, um, a pure wrestling match. Tamara fighting out of the red corner, the red trunks. Lloyd fighting out of the blue corner, and the red singlet. Tamara going for that ankle, and he has a good hold on him right now. Look at that concentration and aggression. Has a good, face. He's not looking around here. Yeah, he has a good he has a good ankle submission on Ray Lloyd. Oh. The first point of the match is lost. Both fighters started with 15 points, as we can see there. Tamara not interested in the points there. He looks as like he was going for the all important submission. I wouldn't say that Tamura is much of an up and comer anymore. I think he's pretty much made his way up in the ranks and he seems to be with it. Um, he, he seems to be able to party with the big boys now. Yeah, I'd say Tamura's arrived. <laughs> Ray Lloyd trying to apply that cross lock on Tamura's arm, but. Tamura gripping for all he's worth. Referee Wada act, asking Tamura if he's ready to give up, but I think this it's going to take a lot to make Tamura give up. Sounds like a very young spectator in the crowd. I mean, the, yeah, the spectators come from a, a fairly wide um, age range. Yes, they do. You have young people, you have um, relatively old people, you have men and women. Got the score, 15 to 13, in Tamura's favor. Lloyd makes it to the ropes. Single leg Boston crab by Tamura. Tamura in no immediate danger right now. Ray Lloyd actually makes him escape to the rope from a sleeper hold, but. Yep, just. Yeah, that little, that little flurry of the feet. Normally denotes a bit of trouble as you made for the ropes, then one point in it. And like I said, with an amateur wrestler, a ground wrestler, like Ray Lloyd versus Tamura. Yeah, I, I thought it would end up being a ground wrestling match. Ah. Double shoot sign there. And it certainly is. This is a different type of style of UWF fighting we're seeing tonight. Devastating Achilles tendon hold. And that actually could bother Ray Lloyd in the, um, later in the match, even though he's let go. Posturing. Feeling their way, looking for that all important opening. Uh, Ray Lloyd seems to be okay. He's fighting back pretty well. But it seems like, even though Ray Lloyd, the great wrestler he is, so far Tamura is coming out on top on those exchanges. Oh, yes. I mean, I think it'd have to be said as we said. It looks as though Tamura's well and truly arrived. And his submission hold seems so much more precision. Face lock by Tamura. Time camper. Tensely focused, making sure that the count starts as soon as referee Wardner signals to him with the shoot sign. Tamura looking for the opening, possibly a fireman's carry. Yeah, he went for the fireman's carry, and now he's going for the single leg. Oh, this could be dangerous. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Oh, look at this, the speed. Determination and confidence. That's how quick it can end. Look at that. that. Beautiful. So, arms along, the winner, Yoshi Tamura. A brief and painful debut for Ray Lloyd, one that he'll certainly remember as we move on to our second tag contest of the night Yamazaki and Silver against Takada and Fleming. <laughs> Kazuo Yamazaki, known for his strong kicks, a very effective German suplex. He's tall, he's heavy, and he's got an interesting partner in Mark Silver. The youngster is only up and up after a shaky debut. He's learning fast.
Nobuhiko Takada, the man everyone wants on his team, the best Japanese Bushido fighter, great skills and a killer instinct. And a great partner in Mark Fleming, another man on the up and up, the head coach at the Lutez Wrestling Academy. Fleming and Takada in the red corner. We see Yamazaki and Silver in the blue corner. Yamazaki opened up with a crescent kick. Interesting tag pairing this. Not quite sure what to make of it. Well, I don't know. It's pretty exciting for me because we we know what um, how Mark Fleming is such a great ground submission wrestler. And then again, we know how great Mark Silver is and how he's coming up fast. And we get to see Takata going up against Yamazaki. Yep, so all makes for an interesting bout and the crowd equally expectant. Right now, Mark Fleming is trying to apply a, an Achilles tendon hold on Yamazaki, but he's standing up and trying to reverse it with a heel hold. With a double shoot sign being signaled by referee Wilder. Oh, and oh, oh, oh. Fleming said, ow, was he made for the ropes? Yeah, uh, left ankle. Yeah, and he had his legs crossed over too. Yamazaki like almost had that oh. kick, but... Fleming in his now distinctive blue trunks. Yamazaki changing to the black tights with a white stripe down the side. Now down the front of the thigh. And rolling over, probably rolling towards the ropes. Now, Yamazaki doesn't look like he's in immediate danger. He looks like he's pretty much um, fighting off the pressure of that Achilles tendon hold that Mark Fleming's applying right now. He's kind of pushing his own foot away, which is taking uh, a lot of the pressure off of that hold. 20 points to 21 in favor of Fleming. And here comes Mark Ooh. Silver. A new up-and-coming guy who an amazing amount of sh uh, short amount of time has come all the way to the top and he takes on Takada and Takada's making his distance pretty well Mark Silver's coming back with his kicks but Takada manages to defend against them pretty well each man in danger of a suplex right now <laughs> looks like Takada's gonna take it Takes it down with a belly-to-belly -belly front suplex. And now he's trying to apply the cross lock on Mark Silver. But Mark Silver knows that it's coming and he's pretty quick to reacting. There it is. Kind of quick to release on the instructions of referee Wada. Silver's fingers posturing and moving menacingly, teasing Takada. And I don't think he's really intimidating to cut at this moment. <laughs> no, I have to agree with that. No one can doubt Silver's ability, but he's, he's in trouble. Yeah, he's in trouble with that ankle lock that Takata's applying now. Two point lead. I was, I was surprised at how well Mark Silver did against Takata in the single match. And the crowd were almost relishing the thought that Takata taken on Yamazaki. No, they both want to be fresh. Sidekick. Oh, that was nice. Four-man crash of Fleming. Well, that's not such a good move. Fleming doesn't want to do too many of those moves because he's going to leave his head open. There's only so many times that you can get that move in. Takes him down. Beautiful thrust kick. Take him down again. Beautiful He scores it down in Yamazaki. Do you want to give Yamazaki the count? Uh oh. Look at these continual reversals of submission holds. Now he has a knee with a cross lock on Fleming's knee. 19 points to 15. And a change of tag. <laughs> the crowd, the crowd, sensing that is a, a good strategy being employed.
enjoyed by these two teams tonight. Well, neither Takata nor Yamazaki wants to go up against each other when the other guy is fresh and you're tired and they're tired. Yes, and although it's a tag team bout, individual repetitions still count for a lot. I don't know if we even see a Takata Yamazaki matchup tonight if it continues this way. It always goes to prove the crowd doesn't always get what it wants. Now I think both Takata and Yamazaki have a lot to prove. And they're out to kill, especially from the losses they incurred a few matches ago, both of them. I'm here. And it was interesting, the last time Mark Silver and Yamazaki were in the ring, they were going against each other. That's true. But as we see, with, I mean, the intense concentration afforded by even the team members on the outside of the ring, come on, come on. I think shows that whether they're... Oh, well, there was a heel hold by Takata. Didn't seem that as much. Look at that leverage, yeah. All you need is a little bit, and that was hurting Mark Silver's knee. And Takata faking him out with a low kick. Would Silver get a chance to work out with Takata in training? Yes, he has done um, when he first came a long time ago, but... Takata just sort of waved away um, Silver's... It, it, that kick looked like it almost missed. I, I saw Mark Silver kind of stepping back, but I guess it did manage to... He, he managed to back out of most of that kick, but... But it tipped his nose, and as you know, the bang on the nose, the eyes water, you lose a bit of the focus. Yeah, it was the tip of the toe, because he was moving back. He saw the kick coming, and he was moving back, but he was a little too slow to react. And now we see Takata versus Yamazaki. <laughs> Takata going for a double wrist lock on Yamazaki. And Yamazaki so far being, being able to defend, but he's getting closer, and it looks like he just might have it, but Yamazaki makes it to the ropes. Nineteen points to ten. Good heel of hand strike by Takata. Yamazaki's in trouble. Aggressive kick. He just caught Takata on the side again. Was that a slip or a knockdown? No, no, it's a knockdown. With a crescent kick, once that heel hits you, no matter what part of the body it hits, it can do damage. And as we've seen there, Takata down. Look, that caught him just right. Actually, Takata looked like he moved back because that crescent kick kind of stunned him. He didn't expect it, and he wanted to move back to um, possibly prevent another kick that was following it. Fleming and Silver go to it. Single leg Boston Crab. Mark Fleming might want to look to pulling him more, a little bit more into the center of the ring. This. I mean, but he has a pretty good arch on that, and he has his weight into that pretty good. And if you want to say get up, he says no, I'm going to make those votes, and he gets there. The crowd loving it. 16 points to 9, Fleming and Takada lead. Yamazaki in again. Mark Silver obviously hurting from that last season. Nice kick to the head. That kick found its mark. I'm just glad he didn't totally find his mark. It seemed that just caught him on the top of the head rather than around the jaw. Back on his feet. Yamazaki looking very relaxed. Oh. Spinning back kick knocks him over. Still that first kick that's stunning him actually. Yes, yes, because I'd have to say the spinning crescent kick didn't seem to do that much to me. But it knocked him off balance. He ran into him with that spinning back kick. But I'm not in there and I don't know. And Takata almost saying, I want to get in there with Yamazaki. And those two still locked. Look at this. Here it is. It missed. But it knocks him over. Give up. Just, the three give, up. give up. Nothing being offered by either. And Yamazaki, rather than losing the point, rolls over and tags to Silver. Yeah, I think he wants to be a little bit more fresh when he's fighting Takata. Both Takata and Yamazaki, they really know each other's strategies very well. They know their fighting styles very well. And that's why they know how bright they have to be when they're going up against each other. 
It's kind of opening up a bit now on Silver. And Silver responding brilliantly there. Ooh, this could be interesting. This is amazing. See, Takata having his own trademark move used on him. This is amazing to see how far, how long away Mark Silver has come. The Dragging the back, back in. into the middle of the ring so Takata can't escape to the ropes and this could be it. Nice, look at that determination there from Takata. Nine to eight, this Takata is looks like he's in trouble. Yeah, back's hurt. Fleming steps in. Fleming in the blue trunks. Silver in the black trunks. And that's how quickly any man can beat any man on any given day with a submission hold or even a knockout. That's the beauty of this type of fight. You can never take anything for granted, whether it be points, whether it be submission. You can have a, a knockout, a technical knockout. There it is. The STF. He's trying to, he's trying to go for the face lock now. His, his knee is really bent back badly. The spectator making sure he gets a record of this one. He's in trouble. Pull. Silver made to the ropes. Nine points to seven. I mean, it's a kind of lead. Crowd really getting into this. Hey. Sensing something could well be on the card here. Nice knee by Silver. Ooh, and he takes him down and he's setting him up for the submission hold and he's going for the arm lock. And he's a strong man though. And a good wrestler. Shoot sign from Referee Wada. Timekeeper just outside that ring here with the hammer waiting to take the count. Mark Silver has come a long way, but take nothing away from all the other fighters. They, they're in there, and they're continually learning. Here it comes, a double arm suplex. And that that looked painful. That was really bad. He had a good um, reverse full Nelson on him. Look, look how, at this. Look how his shoulders, Ooh. you could rip your shoulders out with that almost the way he threw him over. Exactly, I mean, that was good mobility apart from anything else. And Takato steps in. He had a tag, and Takato's in. He goes for the kick to the head. Mark Silver says, no, I'm not ready to go down, but now he is. Yep, takes the count. Still not too good at taking kicks, but well, it picks the cutter or Yamazaki. We know they're kicking, but he rushes in, knocks him down. And look at that applause by some of the female spectators there. Silver seems to have his growing man club. But look at this action. Nine to three. Carter and Fleming One more down. Ooh, they only have three points. One more down. And Mark Silver and Yamazaki are finished. It looks like the cross up now. And that's it. Look at this. And Takata takes it over Mark Silver. As we see Takata with that amazing cross lock. And Mark Silver's arm in the middle of the ring. Both arms stretched high. Takata and Fleming winning this. As Takada disappears, up comes Gary Albright to take on Bad News Allen. Bad News Allen, Olympic bronze medalist in Montreal as a judo player, turned successfully to pro wrestling. He still gives the younger wrestlers a sound beating, but this is his debut in Bushido. the best, the German suplex, the full Nelson suplex, those are his most clear techniques. That emphasizes his sheer strength and agility. There's the record, 100%, eight out of eight, Gary Albright. And here we go, Gary Albright against Bad News Allen. I must admit, I mean, I don't know if I've seen this guy before, because I've got to say it, I'm sure this used to be Bad News Brown of WWF. Yes, you're correct. A lot of people know him in Madison Square Garden as Bad News Brown. Okay, this guy's, I mean, this guy's, well, he's certainly senior, 46 years of age. Yeah, but um, one thing, although you may have seen him as Bad News Brown, one thing many people don't know 
is that he was an AAU judo champion, a five-time judo champion, five-time world judo champion, and he got the bronze medal in the 1976 Montreal Olympics for okay. judo. So he's been around a long time, but all brights in there. Eight fights, eight wins. Can you see him being tested? I don't know. But as far as amateur credentials, we know about Gary Albright, the three-time All-American champion. But it's all about professional credentials tonight. And speaking about um, the Olympics with um, Bad News Allen winning a bronze medal. Ooh, cross lock and makes. That's, that's an excellent judo move, that cross lock. And he makes Albright escape the ropes. Ooh, Albright didn't look not too happy there. The crowd getting into it. I was going to say the 1984 um, Los Angeles Olympics gold medalist in amateur wrestling, Jeff Platonic, was beaten by Gary Albright four consecutive times in an amateur match. And now they're both fighting professionally. Albright, and he's now very well-known singlet with that N on the chest. Not quite knowing what it means. It stands for Nebraska. Right, okay. He's a student at the University of Nebraska. Bad news, Alan. The black trucks. Got a good throw there. You see, and that, that was all leverage move. He, he used his own weight against them because there's no way he's going to um, take Gary off with strength. That was a beautiful trip by Bad News Allen. And now he's going for the cross lock once again. Keep, keep, and I think keep, that keep, first keep, cross keep. lock kind of woke up, Gary up. up a little bit. But he's still he's in no immediate danger right now. He seems to be quite calm and confident at this time. Oh. Bad News Allen then showing a pretty... But he does it again. Well, well. And the graduate student of the University of Nebraska escapes in the ropes one more time. And Bad News Allen seems to be doing pretty good at this time. Yep, giving a good account of himself. Good wine shake. Oh, but I can't oh. you mature. Knees. Oh. But that's how quickly things can change when you're with Gary Albright. Gary Albright decided to take him over, and he does it with a belly to belly suplex. Look at this. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Well, just gonna have to wait and see. I mean, it's still an intriguing bout because this guy's been around a long time. He's bad news, Brown. Bad news, Alan. I mean, what news? Is it good news for UWF? Well, if he beats him, yes, knowing his Olympic credentials and uh, um, being um, a five time world oh. judo champion. But, uh oh, here it comes. He didn't get much bridge on that, but no, dropped and slid. But then again, I think that's bad news for bad news. And someone else is saying, one more, one more. Come on, look at that. I, can't, I can't see bad news out taking much more of this. Look at this. No, I, I think the crowd. I think referee won that. He has to be on top of this. He has to be ready. Can you walk through the crowd? Yeah, that's it. No, what a Satan. Look at this. And Gary Albright. He wanted to put an end to the match, and he certainly did pretty quickly. Well, the news is, no news, and the winner, Gary Albright. Unanswered. Quite simply, can anyone beat Big Bad Gary Albright?